fans traveled all the way from the Volta region to come to Kumasi. What did it mean for you? Uh, that I could say it's, it's amazing. When I see them, I was, I was, I feel like crying. It, it really wow. touched my heart. Wow. Yeah. Welcome to Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafio, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing one of Black Star's new boys, Patrick Puzo. Patrick, welcome to Ghana Web TV. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, how do you feel a day after Ghana's first match against Angola? Uh, I think uh, it was a uh, great uh, feeling to have our first win home here. Yeah? Very uh, great feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, sitting on the bench, and uh, when we weren't scoring any goal, what was running to, through your mind? Uh, what I thought is uh, the game is tough game, and I think we, we could have scored uh, some goals, but uh, and it's frustrating if you don't score, and there's pressure on us. But I think we, we did our best, and we get the late goal, so I think it's good for us. How was the? How was the mood like when the goal came in in the late hour? Uh, I think it was always some. It was always some. Uh, I mean, uh, let's say like 30 seconds to the end of the game and you score your winning goals, it's <laughs> always marvelous feelings. Mm, yeah. mm. And since you guys came back, what has been the um, reaction you've been getting from family and friends? Uh, I think it's, it's positive. Uh, people, I mean, of course, when you... Uh, you come from national team. People try to motivate to give you encouragement. I think it's positive news. Uh, yeah, let's talk about when you got this call up from Coach Q sitting. Um, what was running through your thoughts because you had already been called for uh, the World Cup in the provisional squad, and now you got your second call up as well. Uh, for me, I think it's, it's a great opportunity for me when he called me to to come to the team. I think I was very much happy. And also, I think I deserve it because I've been tough one for some some years now. So I think it's, it's a good feeling. Mm. Would you say this is a dream come true to come into the national team? Yes, this is my dream come true to play for the senior national team. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's everyone's dream to play for the first team. Yeah. National team. And um, you played for the youth side of Ghana. Tell us about that experience as well. Uh, Which yeah, year was I that remember uh, 2015, I played in the New Zealand in the Under-20 World Cup. I think it's a, it's a great feeling. By then, I, I haven't traveled before. That's my first time traveling to really? Europe. Really? Yeah. That's my first time traveling to Europe. So I think it's a great experience. And it gives me uh, uh, the courage and to keep mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of that tournament, how far did you guys get to? I think we were, we were dropped... Uh, I think we dropped early in the mm. group. And, uh, I think so. What was your coach by then? Uh, Celestete. Do you still get in touch with him? Uh, not actually. Not mm. actually. It's belong. So. Yeah. Are you aware that of his his health? Like his health condition is not really good. Uh, sorry, I haven't heard that. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you have to reach out to him. But um, let's talk. Let's talk about um, playing for Inter Allies and moving abroad. How were you scouted? Tell us about your journey as a footballer. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tough journey playing for Inter Allies uh, uh, 2015 that time. I think uh, my first time I was picked from uh, Inter Allies was when I played against Kotoko uh, FA Cup uh, in the final uh, FA Cup game. Wow. I won the best player, best uh, discovery of the year, which is best left back of the year. Wow. There in the club from Sweden, uh, they picked me, which is AIK. They picked mm. me from there. Yeah. That's how my journey started. Did you have a rough journey as a player, or you just <laughs> got the opportunity to play for Inter Allies? How was the journey to Inter Allies like? Where were, were you back then before Inter Allies? Oh, trust me, it was a very, very difficult journey. And, uh, I was playing in the school uh, regionals in Tamale. 
Uh, Tamale. Yeah, Inter schools. Very which school nice. did? Which school was that? Uh, I play for Sparko, which is wow. Sparko and Bota region. Yeah. Uh, there and the uh, Inter saw me and they liked me. They want to take care of me, take me to school, and that's how I started. And back then, what were the struggles? Did you were you able to afford your equipment to buy socks, boots? No, I couldn't. But uh, the boss of the club in Thailand, which is Umar and Rabi, they take care of all this for us. Mm. They buy football shoes, everything for us. Really? Oh, then that that's not that's impressive. So, in Thailand, um, you were with them for how many seasons before you moved abroad? Uh, I think one and a half season. I played the senior side. I was playing the uh, second division, and then the next season they promoted me to the senior side. The senior side, I think I played seven games. Oh, it's also really yeah, and you got your breakthrough move. Yeah. <laughs> Some people play four years, five years without getting their yeah. breakthrough. How tough was it playing in the local league? Because a lot of people complain that the amount of money they make from their local league, their salary, the end is just bigger. Yeah, it's tough, it's tough playing the local league by then. But for me, I'm a hard worker, so I, I work hard and uh, uh, I think that's what makes me, me move quickly. Mm. From now, let's talk about your move abroad to AIK in the Swedish League. The first time you stepped down from the um, plane and you got to Sweden, what was running through your mind? Because you hear a lot of players tell their stories and they have interesting stories. What was yours like? Yeah, for me, when I moved from here straight away, in my head, I know where I'm coming from and where I'm going. So when I, I stepped down to Europe, which is Sweden, I made up my mind that I have to give all out. And I did that. So that's why uh, uh, put me where I am today. Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, uh, you said that you knew where you were coming from. I want you to p give us a mental picture of where you were coming from. Was it, did you school in the Volta? You said you schooled in the Volta region and that is not the capital. So how was it like? Because Back in Volta region, we know that the infrastructure was very tough, playing on the sandy pitches and stuff. At times, how was the struggles like? Give us a mental picture. Uh, it's, it's difficult playing in the Volta region. Like, uh, you play on the sand, uh, like a rough surface, you know. Sometimes it's, it's very difficult. Mm. It's very difficult. That's what I can say. Life at AIK in the Swedish league. Um, would you say it was quite an enjoying one that you enjoyed very well in your first season? Yeah, my first season was not so good mm. uh, because I was uh, a little bit younger. I just came. So the guy played my position as a captain. But the next season, uh, I was aggressive. I played really good. And then they pushed the captain to the <laughs> center back. So I they put me on the left side. And from there, I got my breakthrough. And uh, the same year, I got a contract from... Uh, Granada, which is 2017 or 18, mm. but I couldn't go because Why? of uh, misunderstanding between the, my agent and AIK. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, since then it's it really affected me a little bit. The next year I couldn't play because of this because Granada it was a big club. Oh. Yeah, it affected me because of uh, misunderstanding between my agent and uh, AIK. Mm. But since then I. Uh, Life has been tough. Yeah. A little bit good. Well, you are watching Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafi. We're taking a short break and we'll return. We continue with the conversation. Welcome back from the break. My name is Joseph Adamafio and I'm here with Patrick Pozo, the Black Stars player. Patrick, you were talking about life in Sweden. Um, whilst you were at AIK, you went on two loan spells. Give us um, an experience about that. What inspired that loan moves? Uh, the, the only reason I got to the uh, loan is when I got a contract from Granada, I couldn't go. By then, I was naive, I was young. But I also want to move to a bigger club, which is when I couldn't go. It affects me a little bit. Uh -huh. 
I couldn't focus for mm. maybe some months. So AIK was like, okay, we need to send it on loan. Yeah. And I'm so lucky that uh, uh, this coach, Graham Potter, which is coaching... Uh, you don't mean it. Yeah, he's my coach, which is coaching uh, Chelsea now. He was like, this guy's a very good player. And he brought me. Like, he, he, don't, he don't want a loan from me. He just wants to buy me. You know? So he buy me from AIK to Australia. Really? You played under Graham, Graham Potter, the current Chelsea coach? Yeah. How was it like? Uh, it's, it's, I mean, he, he's been a fantastic coach. He takes us to Europe. We play against uh, Arsenal, Atletico Bilbao, Atta Berlin, Pau, a lot of big clubs. I've been to those games, but I couldn't play because I was hmm. a new player. So. Whilst you were playing at him, what was the strategy that he often liked to deploy you, like the tactics? Uh, for him, he liked to play uh, three back, three five two. That's his formation. He liked the wing, the wings too. Mm, always. Yeah. And if you're not well, fit, you cannot play, you cannot uh, play on his his team. Yeah. But he's gonna make it clear to you that if you can't go like this and defend good, you're not playing. Really? Yeah. And so now you you get in touch with him and hopefully you want to want to work with him again. Yeah. Sometimes we speak. When he went to Brighton, I congratulated him. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about. Um, Whilst you were with uh, Graham Potter, at that club, you scored three goals and 48 appearances. How were you able to do that? Because so, for me, my, my, uh, my uh, how do I say, my reposition, like where I love most is uh, like wing back, which is 3-5-2. I love to, for me, I just... Love to. When you're playing right back and I'm playing left back, I kill you. I just go, go, go. go, go. <laughs> That's why I was able to score goals. Mm, mm, mm. Then from there, you went on another long spell at IFK where you scored six goals. And within a short span, you have a test, you have a good eye for scoring goals. Yeah, that's uh, the only reason is because uh, uh, when I play like a win back, I score goals. Mm. Yeah, I score goals. Because I run a lot. I, 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 like, I, def I disturb my defenders a lot. Really? Yeah. Have you ever met a tough defense, uh, opponent that you realize that? This attacker or winger is giving me a tough time on the pitch. Yes, yes, I, 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 I did last year, which is uh, Russo Saida. Which player was that? Uh, I can't remember the player name. It was really tough. Okay. Really tough. Really. Yeah, I think I met. Uh, is it Silva? Not Silva. I met a lot of players. Mm, yeah. mm. And that was also so that player was really tough for yeah, me. Really tough. Um, really tough. from Sweden. You decide to move to Moldova. Why the decision to move from Sweden to Moldova? Uh, actually, when I was playing in Sweden, I got a lot of offers from clubs, but Sweden was one of the favorites, which is they play in Champions League and uh, Europa League. So I think it's a good opportunity for me to, to get this chance because they, every year they play Champions League or Europa League. Mm. That's why I moved to oh, You said you got... Um, number of opportunities you realized that they were playing the Champions League. But what did the coach at FC Sheriff Tiraspol tell you before joining them? Uh, when he called me, he was like, I'm a very interesting player. He likes to work with me. What do I need? And I tell him my, what I need and <laughs> we got along. Edmond Ado was there at uh, FC Sheriff Tiraspol. Did you have conversations with him before you joined the club? Uh, no, actually, but I had a conversation with uh, another player, which is Bassett, okay. the striker. Mm. And he speak good about the club to me. And he also influenced me to come to Sheriff, actually. Okay, you came to Sheriff Chiraspo, and uh, you become a regular in their starting lineup. Tell us uh, about the journey in the um, Moldovan League. Has it been tough or...? Yeah, it's been tough. When I arrived first, the guy playing the position, uh, my low, uh, the left back, he's been consistent playing Champions League every year. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, in the league, he was like, he's injured, he cannot play. So when the coach gave me the chance, that's it. He mm. never play again. Wow. Yeah. So now he never play. And since then, how, how do you feel playing week in, week out in the, in the league? Good thing, good. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, had a core member of the team. And sometimes I don't play the league. Mm. Coach don't play me in the league. He always play me the important games. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
Wow, that's 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 very nice and to see how important you are to the club. Now, let's look at the Europa League. Where you guys were pitted against Manchester United. What was running through your thoughts? Now you are a regular player, you are playing for Sheriff, you're going to meet Manchester United in the Europa League. Double header. Uh, for me, I think it's normal. The only uh, uh, like the only feelings I have before the game was when it came to the news that uh, me and Anthony, like you know, people were talking mm -hmm, about Anthony mm -hmm, going to mm -hmm. kill me. Uh, there are a lot of news coming up that is going to kill me because first uh, in the first round when they came to our home, they, he couldn't uh, like play mm. his best out. But when we went to uh, London, people was like, "It's going to kill me. This guy's nobody." And by that night, I couldn't sleep because of the news flying UK everywhere. Like, really? Yeah. It. I think. Uh, Did that motivate came, you? It motivates me a lot, but it makes me scared. You know, like my name is in the news everywhere. Like Patrick Pozo, Patrick yeah. Pozo, Anthony, Patrick Pozo. And even that game, I I, I showed to them that yeah, who are you? One punch, you know. Damn it. <laughs> A lot of people were talking about your performance in the game against uh, Manchester United very well. I remember where I was when I watched the match. People were asking, who is this guy, Tozo, Tozo, Tozo? I'm like, you guys don't know about Patrick Tozo. And uh, people said you you placed Anthony in your pocket because they couldn't find Anthony in that match and yeah. all that. But tell us, playing at the Old Trafford, such a big, big stadium. I think it's a good feeling as well. It's not only the Old Trafford. I've gone to uh, Arsenal before. I've seen mm. the, uh, the fans. And I've played against a uh, side which is also big, a lot of fans. You yeah. don't hear anything. So I think it's, it's, it's normal. For me, it's normal for me. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about random questions. And what do you make of Inter? Like the club you played before is currently in the lower tier of the Ghana League. They are no more in the Premiership. Yeah, I think it's, it's bad to hear that, but I think uh, we cannot do anything about that. The only thing they have to do is focus and uh, come back stronger. Mm. Yeah, that's all I can say to them. When you heard the news of the um, the unfortunate um, scandal that occurred about two seasons ago, did you ever believe it? Of course, I do. I do believe it. And uh, I spoke to the Omar as well. He told me the same thing. So, and he also said they cannot do anything. So they have to go down and come back again. You believe they can come back because the lower league is not easy over there. I understand, but for now they are first on the league, so they can make it. Mm, yeah. yeah. Now let's look at um, players you look up to whilst growing up. Who was the player that you looked up to when whilst growing up? Uh, actually, Marcelo. It's my Marcelo. Yeah, it's my idol. <laughs> well, what, what about Marcelo? Do you like the most? He has good eye for giving silky crosses. His overlapping runs are also good. What in particular do you pick from him? For me, his passes and overlapping and his crosses is mm. it inspires me. But his defending, I don't. <laughs> I have my own personal defending. So. Wow. Yeah, and in terms of uh, defending, maybe aside Marcelo, who who do you pick um, one or two tricks from? Yeah, uh, actually Davis. Davis. Yeah. The Dutch player. Bayern. Bayern. Oh, yeah. you mean um, Alfonso? Alfonso, yeah. Alfonso Davis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I get that. I get that. But let, let, let's talk about also um, your aspirations in life. I know Sheriff Tiaspo will definitely not be your only or last club, you want to play at the highest level, which when you look at, to the future, what, what do you see? Where do you see yourself playing? For me, I think uh, I could play in the Premier League as well. Mm. Uh, top clubs in Europe. Yeah. Because I have other qualities to do that. Mm. Mm. And do you see um, that maybe in the next couple of seasons, maybe two or three seasons, you'll be there? I think so. Really? I think so. Okay, coming back to the um, Black Stars, the moment you were named in the provisional squad by Coach Otoado, um, definitely I'm sure that you'll be working on your um, fitness level and to improve on your performance and all that. But 
when the final squad came and you were not there, were you disappointed that you didn't make the World Cup squad? Yes, of course. It's every player's uh, target to be in the World Cup. But of course, if you're not in the final list, you'll be disappointed. But you cannot do anything about it. The only thing you have to do is come back and work harder. And maybe the next one, maybe you could be inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, looking at the Black Stars, your position, the left back position, there are players there. You have Gideon Mensah, you have Babaramba. It's competitive. How are you going to make sure that you cement that role as yours? Oh, for me, uh, I don't care about anybody's how he play. Or for me, I only care about my my abilities and waiting for my chance. When I got my chance, the whole Ghanaians will see if I deserve it or not. Mm. Yeah. Yesterday, when the Black Stars played, or on. Um, on Thursday, when the Black Stars played, fans traveled all the way from the Volta region to come to Kumasi. What did it mean for you? Uh, that I could say it's, it's amazing. When I see them, I was, I was, I feel like crying. It, it really wow. touched my heart. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Were you aware? Did they tell you you were going to do something like that? No, I was not. I was not aware. Actually, I was not aware. Before the game, like around uh, 10 o'clock, they start sending pictures that they are here to support me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. And live at Aflau, said you are the second star to come from there, apart aside uh, Willy Kluche. Do you feel humbled by that? I feel humbled. Uh, what would you like to tell your people? Uh, I would like to tell them that they should keep supporting me. And I promise I will not let them down. I'll make sure that I'll raise the, the name of Flower Higher. Mm. And lastly, who is your favorite musician in Ghana? Uh, musician? I have a lot, all of them. Mm. All them I listen to all the musicians. Uh, and in terms of your favorite food, what works? What the go to food for you before matches? For match? Um, rice, I think. <laughs> Rice with, with sauce. With sauce. Yeah. Uh, chicken. That's it. Yeah, chicken. Mm. And how do you prepare for matches? Do you listen to music or read? How do you prepare for matches? Actually, I always listen to music. I have my uh, this Bluetooth big speaker that I always play in my room to motivate them to be in the mood for the game. Okay, before we go, I'm sure definitely there are young players looking up to you who definitely are growing up from Volta region, want to be in the position that you are. What would you like to tell them as a word of encouragement not to give up? Yeah, what I would like to tell them is they should never give up. When they focus on playing football, they should focus on playing football. And they should keep working hard and they will see the results. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you. It was a pleasure interviewing you. You're welcome. Well, that will be it for Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafio, and I interviewed Patrick Puzo, the Black Stars left back who plays for Sheriff Tua Sport. Thanks for watching. Until then, see you in the next one. Thank you.